Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to AITS Tech Talk webinar. In today's session, my colleague Munzer Karhani will, gui will be guiding us for the upcoming 45 minutes discussing the best practices for Aviva System Platform, the performance part. And I'm pretty sure that this will be an interesting session as well as valuable for everyone. So uh, as usual, please feel free to type any question you have in the question box and we'll be answering it at the end of the session. And now I will just leave you in safe hands with my colleague Munzer. Hi Munzer. Hi Nader. Thank you so much. Uh, as uh, you explained, today we will talk about uh, some practices. We will uh, show some practices to leverage uh, the application uh, performance, that means the behavior. Uh, and we will talk, uh, uh, walk you through uh, these practices before, that will be divided uh, into three before, during and after installation. And we will show you how to install or where to install what based on your topology and finishing up with some tools uh, that will help you to monitor your system, to monitor your health, uh, check if it's working fine, and we'll finish with uh, this uh, very important tool, which is Aviva System Monitor Overview. Uh, we'll give the overview about it. Formally, it's known as Sentinel. Now, why we need to follow these practices? Uh, because if we don't, we will find ourselves in a very um, loaded uh, system. The CPU will be overload, slow application, uh, it will be, will have some difficulty in maintenance, difficulties even in configuration. For example, if I didn't follow the recommendation uh, for uh, the network configuration, I will find uh, lots of communication issues, some deployments issues, and uh, it will end up with some data lost. lost. Before st starting any application or any installation, uh, we have some prerequisites and checklists to follow, like uh, the hardware, software, what is the computer name, and this is very important, the DNS or host file, we'll talk about it, the network configuration, as I said, time synchronization, etc., etc. I will tell you where to find all these resources uh, during the demo. Uh, we have the readme files, which is very important for every installation you need, uh, the installation guide that will come with the software itself, technology matrix that will show you uh, the compatibility with your system or the existing system if, ex if you if you have uh, an old system or with the op op OS it's brief to show you the uh, compatibility with operating system and SQL etc etc and we'll finish up I will give you hints of some tech notes that is very good and useful regarding security and port uh, and some uh, permissions for the, your user now, after planning your application, planning the system, and here we'll not talk about the application itself, not uh, the objects, not the graphics, we will suppose that this is already done. And once you plan your objects and your templates, you have a very good hint how big your system is. And here we have, uh, you reach uh, the phase when you want to install your software. Uh, generally, you have this general topology when you have the application object server, where this is the, these are the servers that will host your objects uh, and, and communication drivers, Galaxy repository, historian server, etc., etc. Now, this can be big or small, depends on how big your application is. I, one of the projects I found, this is one of the biggest, I found like 75 different application object servers. It can be bigger, it can be all in one. And But regarding the all in one, this we don't recommend it a lot. We always recommend that the Galaxy repository and the historian server to be those two uh, servers separated uh, from everything else. So two different servers separated from the runtime. This is the first recommendation we do. We do. Regarding the application object server, we always uh, recommend in case of non-telemetry server to have the communication driver and the application object server to be installed on the same PC. Let's the object on the application object server uh, to read locally and communicate locally with its driver before reaching the controller. Now, in this topology, you have two different uh, uh, networks. This is the application network, and I will show you how, what is the recommendation to configure it. And I have a field network, and sometimes, if I have redundancy, I can have internal application object server uh, networks, so three networks. This is number one the internal, the redundancy number two, and the communication driver with the field is number three. How to configure it? This we will show, I will show it in demo. But what to install? 
it's very easy for every um, every server need to be deployed. It needs to have a bootstrap. The bootstrap is a Microsoft uh, service uh, that allow you the intercommunication with your Galaxy. You need to check a Galaxy repository for Galaxy repository, historian server. It's it's a it's a checkbox only a checkbox uh, that you need. Uh, and the server itself or the software will be installed locally on the server for the engineering station uh, oh yes for the communication driver you have the oida and the io server the drivers itself and for the engineering station you need the ide the historian client to check the historian and you need the in touch now i recommend the ide to be installed as well on galaxy repository because engineering station will remotely connect to your uh, Galaxy repository. It's good to have the IDE, which is integrated development uh, environment, uh, on the Galaxy repository. For the client, in case you are using InTouch host system platform, you need InTouch runtime, which is window viewer. For InTouch OMI, you don't need to install anything other than a bootstrap. Let's show this in uh, a fast demo. So. First, what we need uh, is to, I will, sh I will show you some technos that's very good technos to follow before your installation. There is technos number uh, 470. This technos will show you the compatibility and system, how to, how to check what, what to check, how to check what in your system. Um, this is a very good, the time synchronization. It's a small FAQ. Techno 10, 225. This is will uh, that stack note will show you every user group from Orchestra, a, a config that means Orchestra config, uh, config configuration tools. This is a group. It will provide you the permission. So every in user engineering user must be part of a config tools, a Galaxy owner, the um, the services for SQL uh, SQL service in touch. It's all in here. So what are these groups? It will show you. Uh, it's shown in this stack note. 104002, this tech note is very important to check the ports that you need it to exclude from your firewall. Ah, yeah, in 470 as well, there is a question, there is uh, uh, something about the uh, antivirus as well. Yeah, those are supposed to be excluding from antivirus. Those are the basic uh, tech notes you need. Other than this, you have the uh, knowledge center. Uh, for Knowledge Center, I'm not go for details. This already you can find the uh, detailed uh, vi videos, two detailed videos about the, these portals in our uh, in our channel, and I would recommend you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. But uh, briefly, you have uh, the tech notes, and from where you install the Solution Hub or Product Hub, the technology matrix is where to find the communication uh, or the um, com compatibility of your system. So, for example, when uh, Wanderer applications over 2017 from your technology matrix, it will show uh, what uh, what is the life cycle of your system. So, this life cycle is mainstream support, so the new one, and what are the compatibility, database compatibility, runtime compatibility, visualization, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and even internal coexistence. So, this uh, product can be installed on the same PC with those products and are compatible with those products but separate installation other than this we have the uh, knowledge uh, we have the um, um, what we call it um, i'm sorry uh, the product hub and solution hub for every um, uh, product you want to install you'll find the readme file we highly recommend you to read the readme file before the uh, installation to show you what, where to install what. Now, this is the la latest um, uh, patch for System Platform 2017 Update 3 SP1. There is a new patch. We recommend you always to install the latest uh, patch for your release. Now, uh, for example, you can go for any big release and you'll find the readme file with uh, compatibility with related documents like system platform installation guide. This system platform installation guide or any pro product, the installation guide is very mandatory to read or to look at before the installation. And by the way, those related documents can be installed from here or you can find it inside your installation as well from your CD or the ISO file, it's already there. Let's check, do some prerequisites 
um, I walk you through a, a, a live system. So for example, I have a system here where I already installed only Windows uh, Microsoft Office regarding the Microsoft Office 32, and that's it. It's already uh, prepared for a new installation. First, I have to check the computer name, and the computer name must to be uh, fixed before any installation, any SQL, anything, you must to fix your computer name, and we recommend to have a simple computer name. Do not use dash, do not use underscore. Do not use any type of quotation. Like if you have a several server, server one, two, three, but without a dash. This is just a recommendation. This is one. Two, um, regarding the system here, the, um, we have here the, um, uh, um, the network. So the network is to, uh, it must be configured in this way. Regarding the networking, this is the network. Let's go for properties and use for every network. I told you there is three different types of network. So for every network, you have uh, uh, you have to put it in a different different uh, different subnet or different network. For example, I have uh, for my GR. This is my Galaxy repository 192.168.101. Dot one, for example, with the subnet with or without a default gateway. This is my application for uh, my application network. In case I have a redundancy, change totally the network. Don't put it on same network. Make it on different network. This is very recommended. And for the field as well, totally different network. Now this is one, two. Go for advanced. And in case of redundancy, uh, or before the redundancy, make the priority. So the application, remove the automatic uh, automatic metric for the application, make uh, the priority number one. For redundancy, it's have priority number two. And for the fields, it's three, four, five, etc. And do not forget as well to for the redundancy to remove it from DNS. So the network, the redundant network, remove it from the DNS address because it is static, it will never be dynamic. The, the dynamic part is for the application. So in, in case of the application itself, what you can do, even if you have a DNS, so it's fine, you are working in domain, no need to do anything. In case you are working in work, work group, go for the host file. You can find the host file in C, Windows, System32, Drivers, ETC, and this is the host file. In the host file, Again, this is if you are working in your group, it will take a, a place of the domain controller or DNS. Uh, so go open with, you can open it with a notepad, okay? And simply put the IP address of the application, remember, not the redundant, not anything, the application, like 192.168.101, for example, dot one, well, I don't re recommend one, and let's make it like uh, uh, 11 or 10. I prefer to not put it one. And wait, GR platform, and put all the servers like 192.168.101. For example, 12 for your AOS 1, 13, AOS 2, 14, etc. The client as well. Put all your system in here. Save this uh, this file, or oh, not save it for now. Take this file and put it on every PC. That's it. Last but not least, the installation. Once you open the installation, you have to select even a product-based selection or Aviva system platform computer role. In case you are not familiar with the installation, you can start with application uh, Aviva system platform computer role. At the end, it will guide you through the product base. Now, let's uh, choose this is a GR server only. For example, let's go through. So this, this server, I want to choose it as system platform development server. And um, it's for development. And that's it. You can go. Um, you have here an option all in one. Next. And you get what it will be installed with in this server. Go for customized installation to have more 
features. Same will, will be in case you choose a product-based selection. In product-based selection, I will choose this one is my development here by product. And the first one, it was by roles. Let's add, you can choose whatever you want. License platform, I want the license server to be here locally. Next, let's customize installation. Next, for more details, you can always look at the installation guide. It will show you in detail where, where to install what. So as I said, this is my Galaxy repository. So I'll check the Galaxy repository. It's supposed to be here. And every thing I check, it will, the mandatory part will be checked with it. Next. And here I have to ask for some agreement. I agree. Yes. Agree. And it will ask you here, please put the password uh, for uh, username and password for your application. This is the administrator ab application or application administrator. Please choose the user to be part of, a, uh, to have administrative roles or at least a power user role. So in case you are, uh, you are working on uh, in, a, in a domain, you can always make it a local account. You can create the, uh, this user before or right now in, during this installation. Uh, but again, it must be even an administrator or at least a power user. Can it be a user in the domain? Yes, it can be. Personally, or with some with some um, um, uh, experience, I prefer to have a local um, uh, a local uh, user for the application administrator and have it as an administrator. Like uh, let's have a student whatever. This is already exists. W. Here I will give it now. Create local. If this um, user doesn't exist. If it's already there, you can remove it. Can be part of a domain. Now, in my case, student already exists, so let's go for next. Please read any uh, during the installation the, um, the the warning that you have. It's not a warning. Just uh, just pay, uh, pay pay attention. This user, it's uh, it's have uh, expiry date, whatever. You can change it from uh, the computer management. So yes, etc. And can continue, yes, for in install the SQL. The SQL and the, all the prerequisites exist in your system already. But regarding um, the SQL, here you have SQL Express in case you are using less than 25,000 IO. In case of more than 25,000 IO, it's uh, more recommended to use the standard. Now everything will be, uh, will be in the installation file. Only you need to follow next, 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 and everything will be installed as it's designed. After finishing installation, you will you will have all the groups already installed. This is the groups. As you see, everything with uh, AA that's mean orchestra. Uh, new groups will be will be there. So, for example, AA comping tool. This is the group that uh, you need to uh, to add a user in it for um, uh, for um, the configuration. Just regarding the computer management, you can find it here and add your user depends. Is it a, a, a power user, AA power user, AA user, or regarding the system administrator or power user. But after the installation right away, there will be uh, from, in case of 2020, it will be under Aveva. In case of uh, to, before 2020, it will be Wonderware. You'll find something called configurator. The configurator, it will configure uh, uh, the, the, the server that you already installed. If you inst if you didn't install a historic server, for example, you'll not find this one. So I already installed the, um, uh, the license. It's supposed to have the license. And where is my license of this local PC? Could be on locally, it could be on a license server remotely. So I have to put the username, test connection, and then connect. For historian, I will not go for details because every in installation guide it will show you what, how uh, to uh, to configure your system. Same here for historian, where are the database? Just configure and go straight forward. The Aveva system monitor, we will ch we will check this uh, this tool. It's very important tool. Just you need to test the connection and configure and finish all the configuration. Let me just talk about the system management server. In system management server, this is a new starting in 2017 update three, and this is for uh, cybersecurity reasons. This server um, uh, is to uh, 
is to uh, encrypt the communication in, within your system. So even you have you have to create uh, the the one that uh, provide the, the the certificate on this PC and all these the the the, uh, the platform that's connected to this PC must to have the, this PC's name here. Or in case you don't need any any encryption and it's not recommended based on the cybersecurity, just use no system management is configured so there will be no encryption. Again, all these details exist already in the installation guides. That's it for let's close this one. Exit. In case you you uh, you miss put the application uh, application um, uh, administrator or if there is something wrong with it or uh, it's not reading well, you can always refresh the application uh, administrator from change network account. So you can change your application and put the new one username password in case. And please, every PC must have the same username as application administrator with same password. Once you put it, click OK and it will restart. Will not do this part. This is regarding the pre and during installation. After installation, we have a few things to monitor during my uh, my application, and this uh, will talk about the scan period and the application or app engines. Now remember, I have always to look at the scan period and look at the I/O update time. I have to check there is no overruns or not. There is no overruns, but there is no new overruns coming all the time. The idle time. And I have some equation to make sure that the average execution time, and I will show you those, all these I will show you later on. The average execution time over scan period is supposed to be lower than 30 to 40%. If you have average execution time over scan period bigger than 70%, you have to react. That means your system is overloaded. Generally, the system CPU's load is supposed to be well, 20, 30% is okay, not more. Now, number of app engines supposed to be always lower or equal to the double numbers of CPU cores. But we recommend to not exceed six app engines. Every app, in, uh, uh, app engines have supposed to have different scan period, and every scan period is recommended to be a prime number. What's a prime number? It's a number that only divided by himself or by one. Why I'm doing this? Because if not, uh, I might have a chance that two app engines will execute at the same time. In this case, I will have some spikes in the CPU. In case I'm, uh, I divided different scan period and every scan period is a prime number, I'll be 100% sure that my app engines will never execute at the same time and I will have a smooth uh, CPU uh, load. I will show you all of these, but first and last, um, I, will, I will talk about the system monitoring, Aveva system monitoring. It was the name. It was Sentinel. This is a very good uh, monitoring uh, tools for you that you can use it. It will show you the system healthiness, that the I object is connected or not, the orchestra server status, the SQL servers, hardware uh, loads, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It's very, very useful, and it has its alarms and uh, reporting tools, and it can show you the whole galaxy in one page. Uh, I will go to this in the next demo. Let's go for it now. Uh, first, what I need is uh, to check my uh, system. Uh, I'll go to System Management Console, SMC, so uh, Orchestra or System Platform Management Console. Uh, in here, if you have a history to check it, you only need to check the status, and uh, within the status, everything must to be as uh, green. Let's go with status. Check that everything is green. That means all the services are already or the modules are working. Regarding the log viewer, this is a very good uh, tool to look at. And you can find all the info warnings and error. And by the way, this error, you can put it in the knowledge center here and search for it in case something wrong is happening. Now, what's, uh, what I want to show you is inside your operating integration server or the OI server, once you are creating, um, let's go for local, I have the SI here, SIM, OK. 
okay and i will go for the plc port let's go for plc and device group once you create a device group here this is the interval uh, update interval in milliseconds so how fast i'm reading from the plc for example here i'm reading i have three topics that's mean the first topic i'm reading every 300 milliseconds this is very fast for a scada system I have a normal every one second and I have a slow every 10 seconds. This I have to put in consideration while I'm working with the app engines scan period. So scan period versus how, how, how fast I'm reading from uh, the server. If, uh, if I'm, I'm uh, reading from normal, that means here every two cycles, it will have same, uh, same value, so no need uh for 500 scan period as a scan period 500 let's make it one second if i'm reading uh, a normal update uh, interval time why because uh, i will have uh, redundant reading i will not read any new update uh, value because the value will be updated every one second so this is why it's good to have an app engine for slow app engine for normal and app engine for fast reading why this because M bigger the scan period is, uh, I'll have uh, more time to finish all the scans in uh, the object, so uh, it will be more relaxed. This is the first thing I have to put in my consideration. Second thing, it's always recommended for the DDE Sweetling client when I want to connect to any, any uh, topic, it's better to have the scan mode active on demand. What's active on demand? That means just uh, update uh, when I need to update. If uh, the topic is uh, sleeping, no need to update and make some traffic. So for better performance or, or lower traffic in the uh, in the network, always choose the active on demand. Now after doing this, we can check some attributes for app engine. I already prepare in Object Viewer the list that I need to check. And this is the list, it's very important. I put the object count, scan overrun, sorry, scan overrun, the scan period, execution type, and some idle type. So this here I will show it will show me how many objects I have. In case of scan over count, it will be incremented by plus one, plus one every time the app engine is missing a, a, a reading from the object. That means it didn't. Uh, read all of them. Now, if this number is high or low, it doesn't mean anything. The most important is not incremented periodically, because sometimes maybe something happened to the Windows itself that is not reading, so it will be incremented. So it's not always zero, but just look that it's it is not incremented. Scan period to check. This is uh, already talked how to choose the scan period, and I told you execution average time. This is zero over the scan period the scan uh, overrun, um, I'm sorry, uh, execution time average over scan period supposed to be lower than 20-30%. So this, in my case, it's zero. Zero over 500, it's zero. Last but not least, the idle. Minimum idle time, maximum idle time, and average. Those uh, show me how long my system have, uh, it wasn't working, or my app engine was relaxed, doing nothing. If it's zero, that means the app engine is overloaded. Suppose it must to have a little bit of value in here, especially the minimum and the average. It's supposed to be more than zero. Why? Because I need that my app engine to be to have a period of time doing nothing. That means I'm 100% sure that the scan of the all object is already done. Those are very important uh, attributes we need to look at. And last but not least, I want to, sh uh, to show you um, a very good tool for the, uh, to check the healthiness of your system. Let's go. It's already built in uh, with your system platform. You go for System Plat Aveva System Monitor, or in 2017, it names uh, Sentinel System Monitor. So let's go for System. It's a web-based application. You can go and put in the username, and it's very easy and friendly user. Uh, tools. This is the home. You can check from home how many total active alerts you have, and it's divided 
into what? So here you can find I have two Windows service alert. Total Windows are two. I have total Wonderworld service alert is three. It will show you everything in one page. And if you click on the total alert, it will show it will go directly to the alerts at the same. What are the alerts? You can look at it and check and acknowledge these alerts. And go for configuration and check the admin settings. So it will automatically log out in case the administrator or what, uh, whatever the, the user is logging in after, after what can log out, some general settings, uh, folder settings, etc. some categories, settings. What are the, category, the categories we have in this uh, system? Uh, users and upload agent if you have some agents. Monitored machine, what are the machine that you are monitoring? in this uh, uh, in this system so from my case i have only one machine and because i'm using a base uh, i can only have this is the base board i can have only one machine rules there is some uh, rules overview so what are the rules that i have for example give me an alert uh, for expiry within one day this is the license rule seven days 70 days show and unshow those kinds of uh, rules or you can add create your own rule and at the end we have alerts so you can look at the galaxy diagram look at this i can look at my whole galaxy okay and you can look at the alerts based on uh, some like computer health i don't have anything let me check wonderworld uh, services i have three coming from the historian okay so I have three alerts coming from the I think one of them is related to the client and will show you by the categories what are the alerts in here. To know more about uh, the system monitoring, it's uh, uh, you can find in Aveva documentation, this is 2020, or Wonderworld documentation, if it's previous to 2020, you'll find something called uh, system monitoring. In my case, it's system monitoring user guide it will show you how to use it from A to C. It's 38 page only, very friendly user. It's web, uh, web browser, very easy to use, very easy to configure, and it will show you and explain you everything. Now that's it uh, for today's uh, session. In case there is any question, I think I covered those are the essentials. Yes, for sure, there is a lots and lots of uh, practices. Uh, that you can follow related to uh, to other things, uh, to hardware, software, but this is the essential that I need to cover. Uh, in case there is any question, please let me know. Thank you, Monzer, for the session. I hope the audience found it valuable and interesting as much as I did. So, uh, as we have mentioned before, uh, we are still waiting to receive you the audience questions. Let's give them a few minutes. We received, uh, first we received a question about Sentinel licensing. Is it for free? Uh, it's not Munzer, uh, but can you elaborate more a little bit about where they can find it depending on the levels and so? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Sentinel, okay. Um, every, um, okay, it depends on the customer first. For Sentinel, depending on the customer first agreement. If you have a basic or standard, uh, customer first, you will get a basic agreement. Let me let me check this one, like the one that I have it in here. Um, just let me and, and here I can look at it. So you'll get someone something like this. The basic mode. A basic mode is Sentinel is running in basic mode for multi-feature mode. Please apply a valid Sentinel license. So basic mode is only can show one PC, and it will be limited. This is for uh, standard customer first. In case you want uh, the full features, you can buy it. No, it's not for free, unfortunately. You, can, you have to buy it. Uh, or if you have uh, an elite uh, customer first, you will get it for free. Okay. Uh, I yeah, think I got this part. Um, yes, just a second. Someone is asking if we have 25, 25, 25k IO. How to estimate the number of engines, servers, engines or servers? If you have the 25,000 IO. Yeah, 25K IO. How to estimate IO. the number? IO. Perfect. This is a very good question. Now, um, 
regarding the when, when this is a good uh, estimation and good exercise let's check it in here now when we we've talked 25000 io with or without the redundancy this is the first question with redundancy i can't cover 25000 io with two servers i'm talking about application server with redundancy so i need uh, two application object servers one uh, galaxy repository this is three and in case you need a historian this is four this is with redundancy. Without redundancy, I need only three. So the application object server will be only one. Now, uh, this generally, this is the uh, estimation. So uh, theoretically, the app engine, any app engine can hold up to 25,000 uh, object, but empty object. Now, here you have to ask your question. Uh, how complicated your object is? There is a lot of scripts. Uh, it's very complicated. Once you have a lot of script and complication, you have to put in your mind that this app engine must to scan everything. So the 25,000 object, not IO, the estimation, it will be like I, I explain it, but once you go more in detail in your application, you will uh, find in, in, in new um, uh, arguments in this uh, project. So every app engine can host up to 25,000 objects. In case the object is complicated, it can be lower and lower. And this is another recommendation. In, in case you have uh, any built-in feature, use the built-in feature and don't use this, uh, uh, the script. Now, how to uh, size? Let's have, again, um, this is the uh, redundant application. So theoretically, I have four. But my objects are very complicated. The first question you have to ask, how fast I must read from the field? The maximum, it's one second. By the way, one second is too fast. But let's say one second. So it puts your scan period on one. And check. Do you have an overrun? If you have overrun, uh, even you have to make, uh, to, uh, to put the scan period more, like more than one second. If it's forbidden and you don't, you're not allowed to go more than one second, uh, make a new app engine. So we will have two app engines and divide the object into uh, the object into two. One for app engine one and one for app engine two. Still have uh, objects uh, overrun. That's mean I'm not. Make it three uh, uh, app engine, four app, app engine until you reach the limits. Now this is once you the limits you can find in the task manager. In performance, the CPU must be every time lower than 20%. In my case here, I have eight cores. Eight cores, that means theoretically, I'm allowed to 16 app engine. But as I said, we do not recommend more than six. If you reach the limit and you still have uh, overrun uh, happening, that means you need to add a new server. You need to add a new server. So in this case, will be doubled uh, your server. Instead of uh, uh, four, it will become uh it's not double it's, it's two up engine with uh, with a backup another two up engine with a backup with a, a gr server and it will become six okay the up engine and its backup and the backup will be counted so if i have an up engine a and backup from up engine b so those are two up engines on the same server i have to count them both not only the primary but primary and backup or else my system, it will be start to become uh, instable. I hope I, I I answered that question as it's supposed to be. I and mean, this is what, what they are asking. I think perfectly, yes. Okay. Let's give one more minute, Moser, for the audience to type yeah, sure. any question they have. And uh, gentlemen, as you know, as we have always mentioned, you can just send us any question to our email and we can reply to you immediately. And regarding the sessions, always it's recorded and we're sharing the recording with you, as well as we are posting it on our YouTube channels. So you can just uh, follow our uh, our YouTube channel to keep, uh, to, to have access to all these recordings. You can share it as well with your team. Third questions, I think, came. Uh, can we add Sentinel as symbol inside the application, Munzer? Mm, okay, Sentinel as uh, as a symbol. Okay. Um, regarding the application, 
let me let me uh, um, uh, repeat that question in, um, in a different way. Uh, can I have a symbols to monitor my system in my application? Yes, I can. Mm -hmm. uh, and in uh, my system already have uh, some graphic toolbox prepared for those things. Like if you go for uh, the graphics, you can monitor. Uh, let's go for industrial graphics. Uh, this is that new library is called industrial graphic. You can find some uh, widgets or some uh, some uh, graphics. Uh, let me check. It's some somewhere in here. The graphics that will uh, up, um, will be applied for the app engines, uh, the DD Suite Link clients, and OPC client, and the platform. It will show you if it's connected, not connected. There is graphics for every one of these. In case uh, you want to check the historian, historian as a, it can, uh, doesn't need to be uh, deployed, but in case you want to check it on runtime, you can add a, a platform for the historian and add a graphic for it. But for Sentinel, Sentinel is totally different application. It's outside, it's reading, the, it's checking the healthiness. You cannot have a symbol only for Sentinel. Sentinel is outside, a third party. So unfortunately, no, I cannot put Sentinel inside my application. It's a tool for monitoring, it's from outside. But everything linked to, to Sentinel, it can be monitored through some, uh, some system scripts, some, uh, some graphics, and those graphics in Wanderer or in Aveva system platform is very, very flexible to work with. I hope thank I thank you. Yep. yep, yep, thank you so much. So it seems no more questions for now. That's perfect. So again, I want to just thank everyone for attending today's webinar. We will meet you soon with a new webinar topic. Till that time, stay safe and have a nice weekend. Thank you, Mozart. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Nader.